In this one, we'll take a look at auto bed leveling and some of the sensors you can use to get it all working. Auto bed leveling in Marlin is great when you get it set up correctly. There's a couple different types of sensor you can use to enable this feature. In this video, we'll be using an inductive type sensor and a BL touch type sensor. You could also use a capacitive sensor or even a micro switch and the setup would be about the same. For this setup, we'll be using my Prusa clone because it already has an inductive type sensor installed and a print and Z build plate. First, let's take a look at the specs on these sensors to get an idea of what we're dealing with. Inductive sensors come in all shapes and sizes. A lot of these sensors will only operate in between 6 and 36 volts DC. The typical 3D printer board only puts out 5 volts. If you have a 6 to 36 volt sensor that won't operate at 5 volts, you can add some resistors and directly cable it to the 12 volt power supply. On the Prusa clone, I went with this 5 volt sensor that can be powered by a regular ramps board. I'll put a link to this sensor in the description below. When you're shopping around for inductive type sensors, you're going to notice there's NPN and PNP type sensors. NPN are triggered when you go to ground. PNP are triggered when you go to a positive voltage. This can be controlled in Marlin by switching the in stop setting, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. For this project, I'm using an NPN type. The first thing you should do is mount your sensor. There's a lot of different mounts available on Thingiverse to fit almost every type of printer. The Prusa clone already has a spot for the sensor, so we're just going to use that. Prusa recommends starting with the sensor around the width of a zip tie close to the bed. I found somewhere around 1mm is about perfect. Depending on the sensor, you may need to adjust it up or down. Now for the wiring. On a standard ramps board, these are pretty easy to set up. If you have a 5 volt sensor, you can cable it directly to the Z negative end stop. I found on a lot of these sensors, the brown wire is positive, the blue wire is negative, and the black wire is the signal. It can be different from sensor to sensor, so make sure to check the label. If you don't have a standard ramps board, maybe something like this, and you can still edit the Marlin firmware, you can more than likely still use the sensor. You'll have to cable the ground and the signal wire to the negative Z end stop, and then find power in another location. Again, you can use 12 volt power if you add some resistors. On the BL touch, you'll notice there's a couple extra wires. The brown, red, and orange wire are to control the motion of the sensor, while the black and white wire are your Z end stop signal and ground. The brown wire will go to the negative, the red wire will go to 5 volt positive, and the orange will go to the control signal. The white wire will go to the Z end stop signal, and the black wire will go to the Z end stop negative. When you set up the BL touch, it'll have to be configured to be able to control the pop in and pop out of the pin. Also note when mounting your BL touch, there's a specific height that it needs to be at. Consult the BL touch manual to figure out the perfect height. Again, there's a lot of mounts available for the BL touch, probably for your printer on Thingiverse. Remember, the inductive type sensor has to have something metal on the bed for you to use it. The Print and Z build plate has a thin layer of copper inside it that allows it to work. You can also use an aluminum build plate with some glue stick on it, but you can't use a glass sheet with aluminum tape on it. So what type of sensor should you go with? Well, if you have a metal build plate, I definitely go with an inductive type sensor. These can be had for less than $3 US on AliExpress, and they're very accurate. If you want to print on glass or some other type of material, go with a BL Touch sensor. They're kind of expensive, but they're also very accurate. Now that we know a little bit about the sensors, how to mount them, and how to wire them, let's get into Marlin and see how to configure it. Let's start with the inductive sensor configuration first. Go to configuration.h. For this configuration, I'm assuming that you're using a ramps board because that's a very common type of mainboard. The first setting you'll come to is minimum probe end stop inverting. If you have an NPN type sensor, you'll probably want to set this to true. For PNP, you'll probably want to set it to false. If you do need to change the inverted setting to false, you'll also have to set your Z minimum end stop inverting to false. You can't have one without the other. The next section will be Z probe options. Make sure defined Z minimum probe uses Z minimum end stop pin is uncommented. This is assuming you're using the Z minimum end stop plug on your board. You'll also uncommented fixed mounted probe. This probe does not move. You'll get to the Z probe offset settings. This wants you to tell Marlin where the location of the probe is. Our probe is roughly 23 millimeters to the right of the hot end and 10 millimeters behind the hot end. 
If it was in front of the hot end, it'd be a negative value. If it was to the left of the hot end, it'd be a negative value. For now, we're gonna set the Z offset to zero and we'll calibrate that later. Now we head to the bed leveling section. This is where you select what type of leveling you wanna use. In this example, we'll use bilinear. Uncomment auto bed leveling bilinear. Then we'll set how many points we wanna probe on the bed. The default is three. This means that it will probe three X points and three Y points, a total of nine points to measure from. Next, you'll wanna set the boundaries for the probe. This is to avoid going off the side of the bed or crashing into a bed clip. I found staying roughly 30 millimeters inside the actual build volume is a safe place to probe. You'll have to measure your build surface and adjust these numbers accordingly. You'll also want to take a look at the Z safe homing option. If your probe cannot safely home at 0Y and 0X, then you'll want to turn this on and zero in the middle of the bed. This allows printers that don't home at 00, zero to home safely. Again, this depends on your type of printer. The printer in this example homes at the corner of the bed, so we don't need to turn this on. You'll also want to put a comment in front of minimum software end stops. This is just until we can get the probe Z offset configured correctly. Remember, if you disable this setting, you can crash into the bed. This allows you to go into the negative below zero, so be careful. We can re-enable this after we configure our offset. After these changes are made, you can now upload it to the printer. Really the only differences with the BL touch type sensor is you'll comment out the fixed mount probe option and uncomment the BL touch option. You will have to change your probe location settings, but Marlin will pretty much take over from there. When using a BL touch, you'll probably want to change your Z minimum end stop inverting to false and your Z minimum probe end stop inverting to false. With the newer versions of Marlin, the wiring is pretty simple as well. On the BL touch, you want to plug in the white wire to the signal on the negative Z end stop and the black wire to the ground on the Z negative end stop. Then you can hook the servo wires to the first servo port on the other side of the board. It's the one right next to the button. Brown will be on the outside, red in the middle, orange on the inside. The pins.h file is already configured for these servos. Now let's check and make sure the sensor is operating correctly. We'll move the Z up, enter an M119 command to see the end stop status. All the end stops should be open. Hold a piece of metal against your inductive sensor. The LED on this sensor should either go off or come on. Then M119 again to check its status. The Z min is now triggered. The inductive sensor should be working. With a BL touch sensor, when you turn the printer on, the pin will cycle up and down. That tells you the sensor is working and ready to probe. Now everything's wired up. Either Marlin is configured for your inductive type sensor or your BL touch sensor, and it's uploaded to the printer. Now we need to set the Z offset. At first, the Z offset settings were somewhat hard to understand, because in Marlin they give you this map, and the Z offset says negative is below and positive is above the nozzle. Well, that is true, but that's assuming that your probe is fixed. Our probe is currently set one millimeter above the nozzle, so by looking at Marlin, you'd think he would enter a positive value. But that's not true. This sensor is probably able to sense one millimeter plus. So your offset is going to be a negative value from the nozzle location because you're setting where the sensor is triggered. If you're not getting a negative value, you need to move your sensor closer to the bed. We'll start with a G28 command to home the printer. Now enter a G29 command to run through the bed leveling process. Now move the print head to the center of the bed. G1, X100, Y100, feed rate 5000. Move the print head down slowly until it just touches the piece of paper. Use the M114 command to see where your Z offset is currently. We're at negative 0.56. Let's connect. Back to Marlin for your Z probe offset from extruder. Enter negative 0.56 and upload. Now back to printer face, let's do M114 to check our location again. Home the printer again, G28, and G29 to run through the leveling process. Now let's go back to the center of the printer. G1, X100, Y100, Z0, feed rate 5000. Check again with your piece of paper. Now that we have a rough offset setting, let's go back to home and heat both the bed and the nozzle to printing temperature. Now that the hot end and bed are up to temperature, let's home again, G28, and run through the auto leveling procedure again, G29. 
Now back to the center of the bed. G1, X100, Y100, Z0, feed rate 5000. Check it with your piece of paper. Heating the bed in the hot end has caused the gap to increase considerably. We'll bring the print head down slowly once again. 114 to see the Z height. We've taken it down an additional 0.2. Disconnect, go back into Marlin. We want to add that value to our current offset value, but we need to leave some gap for the filament. Let's call this value 0.65 and re-upload. Now you can start a test print to make sure the first layer looks like it should. You will need to add a G29 to your start G code in your slicer so that the printer will run through the auto bed leveling process every time you print. The first layer should be low enough to stick to the print bed, but not too squished. If you need to get closer to the print bed, increase the negative value of your offset. If you need to get further away, decrease the negative value of your offset. Here's a side tip. When you run the G29 command, you're going to get a map of the points where the bed was probed. The numbers on the right are the right side of the bed, numbers on the left are the left side of the bed. If you notice that one side is much higher or lower than the other, you can use the G29 to compensate for that. Bilinear bed leveling doesn't compensate very well for X skew, so if one of the sides is higher than the other, it's going to have a harder time leveling the bed. But you can use the G29 map to decide which side needs to come down or which side needs to go up. In our example, the right side is about 2 millimeters too high, so we'll turn this side to the right to lower the right side. If they were reporting negative values, you'd turn this to the left to raise it up. G29 again. Now you can see the right side is starting to even out. If we turn the right side to the right a little more, we can get it even closer. And there you go. That should get you started with auto bed leveling in Marlin and you can say goodbye to those bed thumb screws. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below and as always, thanks for watching.